Hello, friends, and welcome to Brotherly Love Gaming, the show where two brothers talk through the past, present, and future of our lives in gaming. My name is Alex, joined today by my brother Spence. What's up, guys? So we're going to do an episode that I probably didn't think we were ever going to do, which is talking primarily about mobile games on mobile phones specifically. Uh, There's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff. Let's start with some good stuff. Spence, I know you're excited about Call of Duty Mobile, which just came out this week. Yeah. So um, first of all, I was really skeptical of it when Mm -hmm. I first heard about it because I don't traditionally play shooters on phones i think they usually control like really clunky right the first time i played this it just felt super smooth like i didn't have trouble controlling everything there's two different types of uh settings for how you shoot you can either have like an auto fire so as soon as you aim over someone it's automatically shooting or you can have um the advanced settings which you basically press the fire button and then aim and it auto aims down sight so i really like that feature that it gives you either or i use the advanced settings just because i'm more comfortable with it um there's all old maps so maps from like cod 4 black ops 2 um and then the battle royale map yes it was a battle royale and you know me i usually go on the rant of right. <laughs> i'm over it running the other uh, direction from them I, yeah I st- yeah, I still kind of am, but this one actually feels really good, which is weird for me to say considering it's on a phone. Right. Um, it looks graphically really good for a phone. Like, I can't believe it, how it looks. It's great. Um, what kind of phone? We got it on, on an Apple device? Yep, I'm playing it on an iPhone XR. Okay. So, so it, it looks pretty good. I, I can't lie. Um multiplayer they have a bunch of different modes there's team deathmatch domination search and destroy Uh, i think there's a game mode called frontline which is super cool you can use voice chat so you can talk to like your team today i was uh i had just clocked out of work and me and my co-worker ran a match with his brother who was at home and me and him were sitting next to each other we were using voice comms just like on our phones at the shop that we uh, work at. So there's just so much that I can praise about the game. The only thing that I don't really like is that there's like the battle pass and like, uh, right. you know, premium crates and stuff like that. That you yeah, have to buy the transaction there. Right. Yeah. Do you think it's any, any worse than like it's console companions in that way? No. Right. Okay. Just since, like, uh, since since mobile devices are considered like the originators of the microtransaction in a way. Yeah. Now you gotta wonder if they would like really push it on that on that end. You would think, but it's not. I mean, the most that they like really promote it is when you first log in. It gives you like a couple notifications of different boxes and like bundles you can buy. Right. But then. As soon as you exit out of it, it's pretty much just all just playing the game. Right, okay. Can you um, connect a controller to that game? Does it have controller support? Yeah, have you tried yes. that at all? I have not. No? Because okay. I don't have anything that's compatible with my phone to connect no. to it. No. I think it just works with uh, with um. Wireless Xbox controllers should work. An Xbox One controller. Hmm. Look into that. I haven't tried it since I since I, I have. I know for sure. Like I knew, looking up in the first place, that uh, PS4 controllers were supported. So that's like sort of all that I looked at. But I'm pretty sure that is said PS4 and Xbox One controllers would be uh, supported in the update. Hmm. Um, because it'd be interesting, interesting to see how the game changes if you can play with a controller versus you know. The touch screen. Right. Since they seem right. to have figured out the touch screen. <laughs> Just introduce a controller back in. Yeah. It. yeah uh, that's, that's cool. The other thing, there's only one more thing that I really do like is that they also have like ranked modes. So you can play and like try to earn your rank, which isn't very like 
typical in my opinion of a mobile game that's usually mm-hmm. like a console or a PC type thing. So they really went for it on this one, I gotta say. And it's it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. My so it really feels like a Call of Duty game just on mobile. Yeah. Yeah. It really did. No, seriously, it does. And this is coming from someone who kind of abandoned the series for a while because I thought it right. was just garbage. Right. But it it really feels like the old kind of games and it's it's really awesome. Uh, so switching gears to something that isn't necessarily a perfect translation from console to mobile. We also got uh, Mario Kart Tour coming out, which you said you really didn't like. I think it's fine with some major caveats, but you really don't like it. So can I hear your negative opinions first, I guess? So there's only two driving settings. Oh, there's only two driving settings. Right. One is like the normal, just steering, and the other is drift. Drifting, right? Why both are yeah, controlled almost the same way? That, yeah, yeah, but why is it? You know, if you put on drift, it's like hops immediately as soon as you hit it. You know, you have no chance to like make micro turns. Mm-hmm. It's just all straight drifting. Which, if I wanted to do that, I would play a drift game. I wouldn't, you know, want to try to play Mario Kart. That's completely different. Right. But I don't know. It just feels really clunky to me. And it's really boring <laughs> for me anyways. Right. Yeah. So my main thing about it is is a super simplified version of the game. So if, if you don't know, you basically, you can, the, your car moves by itself and you just steer. So, and when you want to drift, you just turn on the drift option and your steering becomes drifting, basically. Um, and you don't really need to do anything else. The tracks, at least the I played, I think, three cups total. None of them felt like really complicated in, in terms of the turns or anything like that, that you would need to worry about adjusting your drifts, you know, in any major way like you might in like the console versions. Uh, but right. as somebody who like I really love drifting in Mario Kart, it's like my favorite thing in the whole game. So the fact that it is, I think, overly simplified in this game, and you just swipe, and then your character sort of like perfectly banks around a turn, and there's like no way for you to sort of ride that or adjust it at all. That is kind of frustrating, you know. Um, it makes me feel like I'm missing like a key component of the experience. Yeah, but uh, but the other thing is that it kind of just in general to me feels like it's not as fast or as action packed, I guess, as like a normal game of Mario Kart. And maybe that's because your character just moves and the stakes are lower and you're not doing as much. You don't have as many buttons to worry about. But it just doesn't feel like it's as involved, you know, or. I guess challenging, even though I don't necessarily think Mario Kart is challenging in the first place, you know, but it doesn't feel right. like you're doing as much. No, I totally agree. And it kind of hurts the game, I think, when it could be, could have been, could have been a little more interesting, you know? I mean, they've done portable yeah. Mario Kart games before, you know, every Nintendo handheld since the Game Boy Advance has had one, you know, there's no reason why they couldn't have figured out some way to make it work, but they just, went for the super super simple touch interface and i think it i think it hurts the game i Uh, agree the uh i said all that after saying that i thought the game was fine (laughs) i think it's fine if you want to if you want like a super casual round of mario kart you know but if you have access to a switch in mario kart 8 or even a 3ds in mario kart 7 like there's no reason to pick this up uh especially because of like I asked about the Call of Duty microtransactions, um, this game has a ton of them, and every every character that you would want to get after the first random one that you get, you have to fire off the gotcha pipe cannon. Uh, every cart you want to get, you have to collect. I think they're called rubies, which is again just like the most dumb generic mobile phone type of fake currency that you can possibly use. Uh, basically, yeah. if you want to unlock anything in the game, stuff that playing a normal game of Mario Kart, you would unlock by winning cups and by beating time trials and you know things like that. Uh, all of it is unlocked through getting this in-game currency, which of course you can pay for. 
So I don't know, for people that are maybe more into mobile games in the first place, maybe this is going to seem like it's a really great thing. Maybe the microtransactions are just going to seem normal. But I think for anybody who is a Mario Kart fan and was curious about playing on mobile, I don't think this is going to work for them. Right. That's just my take on it. I agree. I, I, I don't disagree with anything that you said. I just, again, it, to me, it just, like you said, it's slow. You know, then mm-hmm. to me, that equates to boring when it comes to Mario Kart. You know, I want it to be fast paced. Right. Yeah, I think Mario Kart's at its best when it's just like total chaos. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's my take anyway. Like, I love my favorite track is Baby Park <laughs> because it's so short and just exactly. so much ridiculousness can happen, you know. Uh, and you can't get that in this game. I just don't think it would it would be compatible in any kind of way. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this clip of the Brotherly Love Gaming Show. Spence, what you think of that clip? It's a pretty good clip. Pretty good clip. And if you want to see more clips just like that one, you can find them here on YouTube or you can listen to the full audio version of the show on iTunes. Thanks for hanging out.